This is Matthew Stillman from stillmansays.com, and I am, oh wait, it just ended. Oh no, it didn't. Oh, it's no, fine. It's short. It's, no, it's totally fine. <clears throat> Matthew Stillman, stillmansays.com, here with Improvised Insights, the improvised interview show with interesting people. I'm here today with Jasmine Lamb, who has a wonderful, wonderful website called All Is Listening, which she doesn't write on a lot, but it's really good. Um, and she's written a wonderful book also about listening. If you're ever looking for a sensitive soul in the world, find Jasmine Lamb. So, which I'll give you all that information below the web, before, below the video when you're watching it. So, Jasmine, we yeah. got a suggestion today. Okay. So, you well, mean you put a suggestion out on Twitter? I asked Twitter. Yes. I asked Twitter for a suggestion. Uh-huh. One word. And what did Twitter say? Twitter said, well, I got a few, but the one that I picked was slither. 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 So, Jasmine, whatever slither reminds you of, there's uh -huh. a story, a philosophy, something that slither reminds you of, go for it. I'd love to hear about it. Okay, well, the first thing that came to mind when you said Slither was Genesis, in fact. Yeah. And the idea of the snake, I have this just image of the snake moving through the grasses of the world. And so something about uh, both being close to the earth and connected to the earth and this sense of um, maybe like... Uh, danger or foreboding um even though for me i don't really feel that way towards snakes but there's all this association of it so slither immediately i went to snakes and um do you want me to just keep going because i well, can't well, I have a, so i have a question about that so while you may not have that association about snakes uh there is that i broader... might some i might somewhat but i have a broader idea about snakes right so have you ever What's your experience holding snakes? Have you ever held any? I I have not very much, but I have, and it is. It I uh, it's like a little bit of a it's a feeling of excitement, but a little bit of a feeling of of being out of control or, or like being in the presence of something that feels um, so alive and and like it could do anything. Yeah. Slide up my arm, or bite me. Yeah, I totally know that. Even, even like a tiny little garter snake can feel dangerous because you just it feels so strong and unpredictable. And they just appear. They it seems it seems sometimes like they kind of appear out of nowhere. It definitely they take me aback. And and there is something about. And yet I also have this like real deep. There's something so deeply beautiful. I I have a. It connects to some idea around like fears that I have, and like that I have all these fears about snakes, and yet when I'm really present with that, or once I'm over the fright of the snake, I actually like just feel like I'm in the presence of something um, so um, I was going so slithery you know? <laughs> so so um. <laughs> So important and so alive and just so part of our part of the earth and um, you know and and I don't know maybe this is cliche but the part the the place where where I have that kind of snake energy inside of of me that both scares me and also feels like just such a source. So I want to find out about. I've got another slither thing that's coming up, which is to sort of to do with like manipulation and getting what I want. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, all right, so we'll come back to that in a second. So the, I'm interested to hear about snake energy, but I'm also, um, you mentioned about sort of being like this old feeling. There's that, um, you, there's this um, phenomena that frogs that have never seen hawks are still scared of hawk shadows. Uh -huh, they're shaped yeah. in a particular way. Yeah. And there's something like sort of built into frogs that means when they see, you know, that in shadow, yes. they're scared. Yeah. And then I'm also reminded of the uh, the Indigo Girls song, 
which shows you like what an 80s lesbian I am, uh -huh. uh, what would you do for your kid fears? Uh -huh. um, and so there's there's something about, you know, there's like an acquired fear of snakes, but there's also some sort of ancient fear of snakes. And, um, and when you talked about that, it made me sort of think like about the fears that you that you almost wanted to have this primal fear. That was sort of interesting to me. Oh, did it sound like I was saying I want... Well, I don't know if it's that the, I... That you appreciated it. We do have these primal fears. We have these primal fears. And, and it's an opportunity somehow as humans to notice that and be present with that and possibly sit with that fear to the place where it transforms or, or dance with that fear to the place where it transforms whatever way we have of of being willing to um, be with something that makes us uncomfortable and and then then it becomes different it's funny now I'm having this association to kind of men as well so I, I'm both I have the association of, of snakes the kind of feminineness an aspect of the femininity around yeah. them, but then I'm also having this I think as I talked about those fears, I was having this thought around the ways in which I've even been like, that I've been scared of men, or, or they've seemed like this kind of foreign creature that might slither or bite me or something. A cold-hearted snake? You don't play by rules? Yeah, or just, just something where I'm both drawn to it, and as somebody who's not an 80s lesbian, but a kind of uh, 21st century heterosexual woman, even though... I also, uh, you know, in other lives have been all the other things. Sure. Um, so both that, for me, m men have represented both the kind of the scary, this thing that might sort of jump out and scare me somehow. And I don't just, and I'm not talking about, like, being uh, mugged. That really is scary. I'm just talking about a kind of masculinity that I'm both very attracted to and feels like it's going to like put me in touch with some primal part of myself that I'm not sure um, how to be with. Yeah, which is just like the snake. It's both sort of absolutely compelling to touch and frightening to touch at the same time. Right, and, and, and so there's so much energy there and possibility. Right. Yeah. So you, you, talk, you talked about dancing with this fear until it transforms. So what's the practical way that one does that? How do you... I mean, can you... Of course, you actually. Obviously. <laughs> obviously. I mean, obviously, I don't know how far we can go in this conversation about slithering and snakes and Genesis and primal fears and um, not at least say the word sex. Um, you can say it. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, in some ways, what I'd actually say, Matthew, is that you're asking how do I dance with it and how do I be with that. And in, in some ways, I need, I've needed to honor my fears and make space for them, often actually by going off and being alone and, and hiding and having quiet and uh, being able to really, really uh, be with the, the snake inside of me. And, um, and then through that process and presence, not that you know where it's going to go, but for me, it feels like it's an open the door to enter into a new kind of relationship with men and with women, but a new kind of possibility of intimacy, which in some cases leads to wonderful sex. Right. Yeah. And so, but of course, you know, sex can be on multiple levels. It can be... It just, it, it's a transformational uh, exchange of, of energy. It can be obviously like that sex, or it can be sort of the, the sex of creation. Right, and so even with, when you're saying that, I'm just having this association that is like, it, 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 we have, su I mean, another, we have such crazy associations in our culture about what is sex or what is good sex or all of that. And yet for me, it is actually entering into a kind of, in entering into the possibility of not knowing what's ha going to happen next while being in relationship with another. Which, which is amazing, because that's what, how you described a snake from the very beginning, which is that you right. didn't know what it was going to do, that it could all of a sudden crawl up your arm. 
which could either be frightening or so magical and enlivening. So in some ways, you know, it's, it's not crazy to think that the, that the word slither, which is where we started from, has a strong sexual connotation because snakes are very powerfully sexual. Um, they're smooth, they're slinky, they're windy, they're strong, they're unpredictable, they're transformational, they're associated with good, uh, as with the caducus in medicine, and they're associated with evil like from the Garden of Eden. And that's the same way we conflate sex with all these things too. Though, of course, we could talk for a long time about whether the association of evil with the Garden of Eden is that's is appropriate. Yeah, I would I would agree with you that it's not, but it it is tied up in the in the general culture that we have this view about sex that it's good and evil. It's true, and the one and the eve the idea of the snake being evil is, is in Genesis. And by the way, I should not be giving like Bible. I haven't, I haven't like done my time reading that book. That's okay. It's in the cultural consciousness. You're allowed to talk about I it. I would just say that that the that associating with evil is 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 like is the experience of having the fears of of this living creature that's going to do its own thing and give its own advice. Um, it's like it's not sitting with the fear it's just naming the fear as bad and evil right so um so any time that that kind of fear of life comes up in us we have this kind of we have this opportunity to just push it away and name it evil and try to get rid of it um or to encounter it and i say encounter it right yes so your general said than done. Absolutely. So if you had to offer sort of a general guide to how to encounter this, if people are in their own lives are struggling with how to connect to that, where do you look for it and how do you approach it? And then what? This goes back to the dancing question, but sorry, can you ask that again? If I was to give a general guide to how people encounter it? Uh, if if they're having a hard time encountering it, like where what do you look for? How do you know you're there? And then what do you do once you are there? I don't know. I I mean I think that if if when when we get to the place for ourselves where we want to encounter our fears, we have to go there by ourselves. And some of the time when we're on the walk there or even there, we think we're crazy and we think we're going crazy and we feel so not knowing of what we're doing that um, that, that I think is a sign that we're getting there. But when we're in it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't feel like it because we're, we're facing something that is new, that we've not experienced before. And I think we can seek out teachers and uh, f hear other people's stories and journeys on this path. And yet, I also think that looking for an outside authority to to take us to this place is problematic. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's answering your question. But no, there's, there's no there's no specific answer. Um, and there's yeah, I don't know. No, I, don't, I don't know. Everybody has to find their own, their own way to 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 being able to do that. Although, wait, I've got an idea. Yeah. For me, for my personal path for this, a really deep and important part has been actually building my connection to the earth, and building my sense of the actual um, earth supporting me and holding me and giving me the, the, the backing to make it so I felt like I had the room to touch into places that felt very big and scary and might overwhelm me. And so for me, there's, it's an actually involved a lot of lying on the floor and lying in fields and, and also a lot of then exploring movement um, from within 
letting movements happen spontaneously in my body and um, and and sitting with that so it's not quite like the snake slithering through the grass but there's some actual connection yeah of what what of actually the, the snake is is in such deep contact with the earth almost m more than any other creature yeah and I say take it from the snake and spend a lot of time actually feeling your relationship to ground as a as a basis to support you to go to those scary places well that's no small thing no well Jocelyn thank you so much for this improvised insight who knew, we were, what fun. who knew we were going to have this conversation only we just stumbled upon it yes. so again I just want to remind everyone this is Jasmine Lamb of allislistening.com she's got a fantastic Kickstarter project going on right now where she's going to be working on a, a new book, which I'll tell you about in a blog post. Uh, wow. Jasmine, you are the best. I love you. I can't wait to see you again in person. I feel the same way, Matthew, and I feel honored to have gotten to chat with you about snakes and slithering and fears and tell my secrets about how much I like to roll around on the floor. Yeah, and the ground. And the ground. Yeah. Wherever the earth happens to be underneath me. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Uh, and I didn't even talk about the lakes that I'm so into. Yeah, well, that's a whole different story. Thank you, Matthew. My pleasure, Jasmine. Thanks again. Okay, bye. Check us out on stillmancess.com and hope to see you guys soon. Leave your comments below, and thanks again for watching.